Hello, everyone. This is John Thomas, the Mad Hedge Fund Trader. If you can hear me, go ahead and say put in a Y in the chat box. So hello, everyone. Uh, and I'm actually starting a minute early uh, because of technical problems. I had a backup. Uh, one computer run out of power. The charger broke. It's incompatible with my backup computer because Apple keeps changing their plugs every two years. And then uh, the new computer didn't have Outlook on it, and there's no time to download Outlook or uh, Microsoft Office. So we're talking in one state, playing it in a th second state, and running the webinar from a third state. And if you do this long enough, basically everything breaks over time. So you have to learn how to patch together in a hurry on the fly. Uh, okay. Um, yes, we have a comment here. PCs are better than Macs, but Macs don't get viruses. That's a really big deal these days. So anyway, I will get on to my presentation, Trading the New World Order. And I am broadcasting to you live in Silicon Valley. And I have to remember which computer the mouse is connected to and which one isn't. Uh, okay, so uh, Kate, next slide. So take out your pen and paper uh, to take notes or start typing into your smartphone. What I'm about to tell you will blow you away and change your life. For I am in the early retirement business, your early retirement. Next. So a second Cold War and a third oil shock have upended the world order, creating incredible investment opportunities. The second best entry point of the decade to buy stocks is setting up right now. Which sectors you should be piling into uh, to deliver the keys to your early retirement? Well, we just so happen to know that. Oil's life is extended, but EVs are going into hyperdrive. You're still trading oil against a zero price sometime in the next future, maybe in a decade or so. Uh, just let me check the market real quick, make sure all our trade alerts are working. And the answer to that is that they are. Uh, we're up 225 on the Dow, down 263 on the TLT. Uh, it's still early days for the short sale of bonds. Uh, we started the year at, or actually we hit a high in November at uh, 155, we're at 132 now. I think we go to 105 by the end of 2023. That means it's a fantastic short sale. All commodities are going to all time highs, could even double from current levels. Listen to the guy who made 90% in uh, 2020 and so far 30% in 2022. And that's actually 90% in 2021. Uh, next. Uh, so Kate, here you have to hit the play arrow. It looks like the video did transfer over. So hit play. Uh, okay, so this is me at the Albuquerque Balloon Festival. And uh, I have 53 years of experience in the global financial markets, 10 years as the economist correspondent in Tokyo and later the White House. 10 years running the International Equity Division at Morgan Stanley, Marine Corps Combat Pilot in Desert Storm, 10 years running the first international dedicated hedge fund, five years fracking for natural gas in Texas, 14 years publishing the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader. Uh, take my half century of trading experience and add it to your own. Learn from my trading experience ex trading mistakes, you don't have to repeat them. And believe me, there have been plenty. Oh, and if you ever need a ride up to 9,000 feet in a hot air balloon, I am your man. And watch me almost fall on my face getting out of the balloon. Okay, next. Okay, so that replay, so hit next again. Okay, so the 90,000 foot view, we're talking about exponential tech which ha hasn't even had a fraction of it discounted in the market yet. The Roaring Twenties have only just begun and won't be derailed by the Ukraine war or the Fed. The pandemic brought us 10 years into the future, 
practically overnight, and we will take 10 years to collect those expanded profits. The end result is a hyperbolic effect on company earnings and stock prices. While the economy may be cyclical, it is adoption of the new technologies that is permanent, greatly leveraging company earnings. There are hundreds of hundred bankers out there awaiting discovery and listing. Don't sell the roaring 20s in 19 or in 2021. To cash in, you must know which names to shoot for and when. Okay, next. So 2022 is looking even better after a war-induced Q1 dip. Stocks will come roaring back. The net effect of the war will be to allow us to buy the best stocks at cheaper prices. Bet you never thought you'd get Apple again under 150. That's about to happen. U.S. company sales will be 15% higher this year. Profits will explode by 34% or more. The operating leverage of U.S. firms is the highest in history. The Delta variant has peaked and it's on its way to zero. Same is true with the Omicron variant. Time to load the boat is not coming, but not quite yet. Next. So here's our trailing uh, one-year return, 86.77% over the tw past 12 months. It's a performance to die for. And by the way, this performance can be yours as well. Next. What happens when Goldilocks moves in? Well, you get an average return of 44.91%, average annualized percent return, and this is for the past 12 years. By the way, we are outperforming the S&P 500 by 2.2 to one. Next. Uh, so if you're gonna spend the next hour listening to me, it's best to find out who I am. My family origins are very humble, growing up as the oldest of seven children, on a remote farm in Southern California. I lived the all-American childhood, playing little league baseball and becoming an Eagle Scout. By the way, my two daughters just became the first ever girl Eagle Scouts. Next. There wasn't much to do in rural California in those days except hunting, so I picked up a job as a paper boy for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. First paper I delivered covered the Kennedy assassination. I found the stock pages, bought IBM at $20, sold it at 30, suddenly found a far better way to make money than delivering newspapers off the back of a bicycle. By the time I was 16, I earned enough money to fly to Europe. By the age of 17, I visited more than 50 countries and spoke four languages. Next. Uh, at UCLA, I majored in math and DNA research, which landed me a job at the nuclear test site in Nevada. Their yield didn't mean interest paid, but millions of Russians killed. I didn't see much of a future in that, so the government sent me to Southeast Asia for a few years of intelligence missions, where I learned how to jump out of and fly perfectly good airplanes. There I advised the militaries of American Asian allies. Next. As the war wound down, I became a foreign correspondent for The Economist magazine in London, when they learn a, I had a math degree, they switched me over to covering the Asian economy and the stock market. Ta-da! And after 10 years of government service, all I got was this box of medals, which I trot out once a day on Veterans Day. Next. As a foreign correspondent, I covered China during the Cultural Revolution and was the first American reporter to visit North Korea since the Korean War and cover the continent all the way out to India. Next. I figured out very quickly, you didn't have to be that smart to make money in the stock market. So I got into the industry joining Morgan Stanley. After 10 years there, I started my own hedge fund. You can see on the right, that's me losing the All Japan Karate Championships. Uh, warning, I never uh, enter a karate final with a broken wrist, which I did, but at least I did. Uh, 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 at least make it to the finals. Uh, and by the way, the man who uh, signed my security card, Morgan Stanley, unfortunately died at nine. Died at nine eleven. Morgan Stanley had thirty floors in the South Tower. Uh, the head of security cleared everybody out of the building, went back up to make sure no one was left, and the building collapsed with him in it. Unfortunately, next. 
I rapidly became the top performing hedge fund manager of the 1990s, eventually bringing in a 1,000% return in a decade. Next. Then the money really started to pour in. It's an understatement to say that when your income goes from the thousands to the tens of millions, it really has a big impact on your lifestyle. You get to do things like buy the latest hot car, uh, fly your own private plane around Europe, go marlin fishing in Mexico, and collect vintage Rolls Royces for fun and profit. Next. Uh, I sold my hedge fund in 2000, retired to go into the oil and gas industry. After making a killing there, I missed the stock market, started the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Industry, Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader in 2008. Next. Uh, I now spend my days pursuing my first love, finding winning trade alerts, but now I do it from my three mansions in San Francisco, Lake Tahoe, and Zermont, Switzerland. And I've quit turning millionaires into billionaires. Uh, there's, uh, there's far more satisfaction leveling the playing field for the average guy and teaching him how to trade. And that includes you. If I can take a $50,000 account and turn it into 500,000, that is more job satisfaction than I could ever get anywhere. Next. Uh, however, every silver lining has a cloud uh this is my 2020 tax return haven't filed 21 yet um uh, and it shows i had to pay 8.2 million in taxes on 20 million in trading income ouch i just fall down on my knees and thank goodness i can pay this without having to uh suffer an appreciable dent in my lifestyle next I, in the little free time I have left, I pursue my other love, flying vintage aircraft on weekends. You see an old plane flying loops over San Francisco or London these days, it's probably me. Uh, and this summer, if I make it to Europe, I'm scheduled to fly a 1940 Supermarine Spitfire, uh, the plane that won the Battle of Britain. Next. Uh, the ultimate luxury, of course, is to give to those who need it. Um, and uh, as a Marine Corps veteran, I volunteer for grief counseling for widows and orphans, and I'm a major donor to wounded warriors. When the wildfires hit California, I hit the main evacuation centers, handed out $10,000 worth of Target gift cards. Uh, you can see on the right, that's me visiting my in-law's house, which completely burned to the ground, unfortunately. Uh, next. So there is a method to my madness. The Warring Twenties are here. Bond prices have peaked and interest rates have bottomed. Next to come is a multi-year bear market in bonds and the greatest short selling opportunity of the decade. Uh, new war sectors have joined the fray like defense, commodities, and fertilizer. And although they've had enormous one week jump since the start of the war. Uh, in fact, it's early days and uh, the best is yet to come. Keep your tech stocks as outer year earnings are being wildly underestimated. You're finally gonna have a chance to get these stocks cheap once again. Tech always comes back because that's where the future of the economy is. Uh, a quick global recession will be followed by a quick global rebound. We could well be at new all-time highs by the end of 2022. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is sold off 56% and a bottom is near. So it'll be time to pile from uh, that sector again too. And if you're wondering why I'm smiling in this picture, it's because I'm flying a P-51 Mustang. If you don't know what that is, next, this is my friend, Geraldine, a uh, World War II fighter who I generally fly about once a year. This one's based in Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, kind of a combination of a uh, jet and a fighter a piston engine with a 2000 horsepower engine. Next. So the war in the Ukraine basically has changed our world, brought a new iron curtain ringing down on Eastern Europe uh, and totally upended the world order practically overnight. We now have a second Cold War. 
surprise Ukrainian resistance has expanded the war from days to years or until uh, Russia gives up or Putin has an accident, whichever happens first. Equally surprising was a massive global support for Ukraine. Germany sent its entire stock of Javelin and Stingel missiles by truck overnight on roads, which the Russians unwisely left open. And those roads are still open today. It's only a six hour drive from the Polish order to uh, Kiev where the big fighting is happening. Uh, the uh, Ukrainians actually have been preparing for a guerrilla war for the last seven years. It took nobody less than the California Air National Guard has been training the Ukrainian army how to use javelins since uh, 2014. And they actually have more javelins than they can use. So they stockpiled them at all the key intersections in Ukraine. That's why all of these uh, ambushes of Russian tanks and trucks are happening. And of course, the Ukrainians kindly send drones over had these ambushes to video them. So we get to watch them on CNN, Fox, or YouTube. So it really is a guerrilla war fought in the most modern digital way. The US is backstopping Europe with overnight flights of emergency supplies. I was at Travis Air Force Base uh, yesterday uh, uh, participating in classified briefings uh, and watch the C-17s take off with all manner of war supplies for Ukraine. They will be in Ukraine the next day. Incredibly, all of the infrastructure left over from the Cold War is still there and we're now using it all. Uh, Russian plan for a one day invasion, so only sent gas and food for one day. They literally expected to be greeted by bouquets of roses. Roses never showed up. Ukrainian resistance fighters did. As a result, tanks are running out of gas and soldiers are starving and they are running out of ammo. This is not your grandfather's Russian army. Troops are untrained, short of supplies and poorly led. There are mass defections, there are mass uh, draft dodgers going on in Russia. Strategy has been a disaster. Casualties actually now are higher than 6,000. And the Russians are cremating the bodies of their dead, so there's no evidence of how many they lost. Uh, go ahead and next slide. War in Ukraine and the markets. An out of the blue war takes the VIX up to 38 and dries up liquidity. Uh, falls have so far been modest with Fed tightening already taking stocks down 12% before the war even started. Russia has a tiny $1 trillion economy against the combined GDPs of the US and Europe of $45 trillion, but has an outsized presence in energy and certain commodities. So there's no way Russia can win a war against the United Ukraine, Europe, and the United States. Complete exclusion of Russia from the global economy will have a minimal impact on us and a massive impact uh, for Russia, dropping per capita incomes there from uh, $10,000 to only $1,000 a year. I wouldn't want to be the leader of a country that saw a 90% decline in standards of living. Russian GDP expected to fall by 35% uh, this year. The Russian economy is in complete collapse right now. Wars are positive for the economy in that they increase spending, but they are also inflationary. Once the initial socks are over, it's back to a bull market as usual. Biggest risk to markets is an upside shock prompted by a Putin assassination, bringing an overnight $3,000 rally. So for that reason, you can't run big shorts in the market right now, uh, unless you get really extreme moves because this thing could end any day or it could end in years. Next. Uh, it, of course, you would hate to have your entire supply column showing up on YouTube every day. This is the Russian supply column nine miles north of Kiev, and they are getting ambushed left, right, and center. Russians are getting slaughtered. Next. So the global economy, looking in the rear view mirror, supply chains or problems are now in the price. US CPA came in on a hot 7.9%. Uh, 
Headline unemployment rate fell to only 3.8%, and we are approaching decade lows. And workers are getting some of the biggest price, uh, wage increases they've seen in 40 years. Uh, Q4 GDP rises by 6.7%. That's a 38-year high in its final read. The war will limit Fed interest rate hikes this week to only 0.25%. The ports log jam is breaking, supplies are making their way into the country. U.S. emerged as the only safe place in the world to invest and therefore will be the first, the fastest, and the most to come back when the war either winds down or ends. Uh, next. Uh, another massive positive, the pandemic has essentially ended. U.S. pandemic cases have collapsed by 96% in the uh, in the last month. Uh, and as of today, California schools are no longer requ requiring masks for students. Next. Stocks, we now have a wartime market. The market only sees the Ukraine war right now. Fundamentals, earnings, all that stuff are irrelevant. Nobody cares. They're all waiting for the next atrocity to happen in the Ukraine and Russia is providing us with an ample supply of those. Poison gas is probably your next big headline, and of course the Russians will blame us. Banks are crushed because of slower interest rate rises, a slowing economy, rising default rates, and losses on their Russian investments, with Morgan Stanley and Citigroup taking the biggest hits, and Goldman Sachs is looking at potential uh, $1 trillion loss on the uh, insurance policies they wrote on Russian debt. Commodities exploded to the upside on the loss of Russian supplies and greater war demand. Defense shares rocket uh, on the second Cold War with U.S. defense spending rising from 3.5% to 4% of GDP in the coming year. Germany doubled their defense spending and chipped in an extra $100 billion on top of that. So you really want to be looking to buy Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, who make the uh, Javelin missiles, and General Dynamics on dips. Volatility will remain, but are making multi-month bottoms. Use $40 to uh, buy uh, long plays in American stocks and options. Use these really high uh, VIX prints to get in on options on the long side. Well, companies are writing off billions of dollars in Russian investments but are making uh, a fortune on oil at $110 a barrel or higher. Virtually all foreign companies have abandoned Russia, leading to big one-time only write-offs. Look for a terrible first half of the market and a very strong recovery in the second half. Next. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at our market timing algorithm, see what it's predicting. Uh, it sees a worst case scenario of a 20% move down in the S&P 500 from the 480 high. Um, that could happen in the next weeks or months. Uh, after that, I'm looking for a very strong bounce off of 384 all the way back up to new highs by the end of the years, possibly 500 or higher. So if you get in on the next bottom, you have a shot at making a 25% gain uh, in the next run to the highs. So that's why I say best opportunity of the decade setting up here, just sitting on your hands for now, do your research and make short lists of names to buy. Uh, next. Uh, so we play this with the barbell portfolio. We run split portfolios, half in big tech, and half of domestic recovery stocks, including railroads, airlines, cruise lines, defense, couriers, steel companies, fertilizer, banks, construction, credit card companies, hotels, casinos, and online ticket sales. And we do this because technology, uh, although they only employ 2% of the workforce, account for 27% of the market cap and 38% of all US corporate earnings. Uh, next, uh, NASDAQ has absolutely had its head handed to it. Uh, we see it falling as low as the 200 day moving average at 10,454. And then you want to buy with both hands 
because then we see a potential 50% gain by the end of the year, going back up to 15,000, which is where it was only at the beginning of the year. So, uh, or mid January. So uh, again, another great buy setting up for tech. Next. Uh, Microsoft, uh, again, wanna, you want to be a major player on any rebound. You want to get into all these digital plays and you're going to be the given the best opportunity uh, to buy these stocks since the April 20 pandemic low. Next. Uh, Apple, uh, another great play here. Um, I highly doubt we go anywhere near the 200-day moving average. But you could get it somewhere below to below 150. So I'm looking to buy the next dip in Apple, and after that, I see a run to 200. And a lot of people have uh, targets for next year for Apple at 250. 5G fever is here. A massive uh, generational upgrade will take years. They just launched a new uh, low-end phone, 5G, for 475 dollars. One billion phones need to be bought to uh, upgrade to 5G. Oh, and they have $250 billion in cash. So if you're buying Apple, you're competing against the company buying its own shares. Next. Uh, Amazon, another nice play setting up here. Uh, natural entry point at the 200 day moving average. That's a 2480. I'm looking for 4,000 or higher sometime in 2022 or 2023. Next, uh, Google, another big play. Uh, I love playing giant companies with moats that nobody else can get into. Uh, of course, they have to pay a few billion dollars in fines to Europe every year because Europe doesn't have a Google. Uh, and there's a major not invented here play going on. Uh, they have 92% of all search and 15% of that is for travel earnings going great guns there. Next. Uh, second half of the barbell bets on a massive domestic global recovery uh, to continue till 2024. Upside potential for recovery stocks in 2022 is far greater than for tech. Some of these stocks have not moved for five or 10 years. Focuses on economically sensitive cyclical industries, makes a great counterweight to high growth technology. We could spend all of the next three years rotating back and forth between these two groups. That's why all the smart money is running barbell portfolios with exposure to both. Next. So of course, Boeing has got to be uh, a first pick in that area. Uh, we're now uh, in the neighborhood of uh, 170, uh, and I see that stock nearly doubling, doubling to $300 a share by the end of this year or next year. Next. Uh, JP Morgan is the value play in banks. Banks love rising interest rates, falling default rates. And they are hugely overcapitalized and moving into online banking as fast as they can so they can close their expense, expensive branch network and cut their costs. So looking to buy close to the 200 day moving average at 118, I see the move here to 200. Next. Uh, JP Morgan is the, uh, uh, sorry, U Union Pacific. Uh, in any recovery, you need to move a lot of stuff. The main east-west route moves oil and food to China. It's a trade play. It's not your father's railroad. It's really kind of a high-tech company. It's a long time since they were using these engines, which this one, by the way, still works. It pulls the Polar Express every Christmas in Portland, Oregon. So again, we're taking a run at the 200-day moving average. If we get close to that, you want to start loading the boat on Union Pacific. I'm targeting $300 a share there. Next, uh, Berkshire Hathaway uh, hit all-time highs this morning because uh, of their huge exposure to domestic industrial plays, Apple and banks. Uh, it's the one-stop barbell portfolio. We've been running longs in this for years and they have been huge, hugely successful. Who says a 90-year-old can't uh, uh, make money in the market? 
Warren is still at it. Next. Uh, let's talk about the bond market for a bit here. There was a massive flight, flight to safety bid initially when the war broke out that took the TLT all the way up to 142. We slammed that as fast as we could, increasing our shorts. Those have all worked. We've dry, basically dropped 10 points in three weeks in the TLT. Uh, war always brings higher interest rate and inflation. This time will be no exception, except this time we have a Fed tightening cycle to begin in two days, which could last for three or five years. Wars also bring greater government borrowing, except this time the whole world will be borrowing at once to fund greater defense spending now that we have a rogue Russia on the scene. Uh, you know, Russia, you know, in the aftermath of the invasion, 10-year treasury yields dropped all the way down to 170. We're back up to a three-year high now at 208. Half-point rate hike is off the table, but Powell says a quarter-point rate hike is a sure thing. We will find out on Wednesday. Sell any six-point rally in the TLT, it's like having a rich uncle write you a check once a month. Uh, in a year, the yield on 10-year treasury bonds will be at 250 or higher. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, TLT could plunge from 180, which was the pandemic high, all the way down to 105 by 2023. That makes it the short of the century. Next. Uh, here's the TLT, and you can see our market timing algorithm has really been hammering away at this, selling every big rally. Uh, uh, rallied up to two, 142 just recently, and... Uh, looking for 105 by the end of next year. Uh, so there's your major uh, half century long uh, downtrend in bond prices just beginning. Next. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, can you hear me? Okay, just checking. Uh, okay, TNX, there's your yields. We have gone from uh, the low uh, in the pandemic low was 32 basis points. We're back all the way up to 208 on our way to 250, maybe three, three and a half percent by sometime next year. Next. Foreign currencies, panic dollar buying has broken out. The flight safety bid has sent the buck to a two-year high. European currencies are dumped in the face of a real war. Russian ruble crashes 50%. European interest rates are plunging on recession fears. Currency with the fastest appreciate, appreciating interest rates usually does best. Note this time is no exception. Uh, Long-term fundamentals for the dollar are poor as our debt increases. Uh, dollar short could be the ten new, new tenure trade, but not yet. Stand aside from Forex now. There are much better fish to fry. Next. Uh, here's the UUP. Uh, and uh, see a great double bottom set up last year. Uh, it's been off to the races ever since. I expect it to continue strong for the foreseeable future or until the war ends, whichever happens first. Next. Australian dollar is my favorite currency to buy, and it's already starting to hold up well. Um, the, um, uh, the reason is that Australia is a major commodity and energy producer. They have massive uh, uh, gas fields uh, with Woodside Petroleum on the Australian North Shelf. All that goes to Japan and China. Uh, and they also are very large producers of just about everything you need, copper, iron ore, uh, used for steel, uh, uranium, uh, and food, you know, wheat, uh, beef, and so on. So they're in the sweet spot right now in any kind of commodities boom, which I think will continue for several years. Next. Uh, energy has entered a new golden age, broke 110, then went all the way up to 132 intraday. 
Uh, we broke that uh, 125 target almost immediately. US and other countries are rushing to release reserves, but that can only have a token effect at best. Big problem is natural gas for Germany. Replacement with US gas would require a decade long build out, but they, they're gonna try and do this in a year. Uh, they think they can replace two thirds of the gas in a year. One can only hope uh, in the meantime, better start buying warm sweaters in Germany you could have a cold winter next winter. So how much do you wanna invest in a resource that's going to zero in 20 years? That is the problem. Who wants to invest in uh, infrastructure that'll be useless in 10 or 20 years? And the answer is only governments can do that. The irony is that the war will accelerate the move out of carbon into alternatives. Everybody in California who bought a Tesla, and there's about 2 million of us, Looking like geniuses now as we drive past the gasoline signs at $7 a gallon. Risk reward for new oil trade is terrible. Uh, this is the last chance to sell all of your holdings. You'll never get better energy prices than you're getting today. Even if oil goes higher, uh, the stocks won't go much higher than here because nobody wants to buy a top. So long term, avoid all energy plays like the plague. It's the new buggy whip industry as the US and the rest of the world decarbonizes. Next. Uh, this is a map of Russian oil fields uh, and the Russians are talking about moving uh, their sales away from Europe towards China. But just like we have a 10 year infrastructure build out to replace German gas, they have a 10 year infrastructure build out to move gas uh, to China instead of Europe. So nothing is gonna change. You know, I've been in the energy industry for 50 years. And the one thing you learn is that nothing happens fast. Everything takes is slow. People think in terms of decades and that is not gonna change. Next. So oil, there's the short squeeze of the century up there taking us up to 132. My long-term term target is $10, uh, where you start to get demand for naphtha, fertilizer, plastics, and other spinoff products. By the way, uh, during the pandemic low, I bought oil at negative five, and I got stopped out. I got stopped out at negative 10 because uh, it was on the way to negative 37. Next. Uh, here is the 20 year chart for oil, and you can see we have a definite downtrend already in play. We actually peaked in 08. Uh, the 08 high was 149. We could hit that 149 high again. That will create the double top of the century for the oil market. Then we go to $10. Next. Uh, precious metals, we finally got a bid after gold doing nothing forever while it was being replaced by Bitcoin. Now the opposite is happening. People are dumping Bitcoin and buying gold. Uh, of course, all that Russian buying of gold for the last several years suddenly makes sense. That's because they expected to get shut out of the Western financial system on their next invasion. Is gold the new Bitcoin? Uh, the elemental uh, past $2,000 last week, many analysts are now raising their targets for the barbarous relic now that Bitcoin has utterly failed to provide protection against absolutely anything. Or is inflation, economic slowdown, pandemic, Bitcoin has fallen in every case. Rising interest rates bode poorly for precious metals as it raises the opportunity cost for non-yielding assets. Bitcoin clearly sucked capital out of the market last year, not happening now. Stay away until this plays out. Silver is the bigger and better play because there is big demand uh, from the solar industry for silver. Even if you have only tiny amounts of silver going into uh, solar panels, when you're making solar panels by the millions, it adds up to quite a lot. Next. Uh, here is the gold chart. You can see the 2000 breakout there. We started getting buy signals in 2016, 2017, played it on the long side all the way up, but we had no gold trades in 2021 
because of the Bitcoin phenomena. Next. Uh, and here is the silver uh, trust, the SLV. And again, uh, our long-term forecast here is 2023, sometime this year or next year. Looks like it's getting ahead of steam now and could break out to new all-time highs. Next. So don't play with matches. You could probably do okay just buying all the stocks I just mentioned and forgetting about them. Uh, however, the reality is the conditions for these companies change every day. They are all viciously competing, trying to put each other out of business. Uh, if you don't get daily updates on the fundamentals, you could easily get wiped out. Uh, today's big winner could instantly become tomorrow's loser. That's why you need someone like me to guide you through the thicket to avoid an out of the blue blow up. Next. I gained financial independence for life and so can you. All of this can be yours. Discover how to make thousands of dollars a year in extra income. Go from complete beginner to seasoned pro in weeks. Learn how to quit your day job and trade for a living full time. Trade from anywhere, anytime. Supplement your retirement income with the satisfaction of booking winning trades by the hundreds. And that's me sending you a trade alert from the coast of North Africa a couple of years ago. I'm smiling as hard as I can because it's 120 degrees. Next. The harsh truth is you really need my help. The majority of individual traders lose money. They lack the correct training and discipline to succeed. Uh, most broker research suffers from grievous conflicts of interest. Wall Street is all about moving money from the uneducated to the educated. Uh, the easy solution is that, to that problem is to get yourself educated. Fidelity did a 20-year study and learned that their top performing investors were dead people. Why do dead people do so well? Because they never sell. Next. You need a real pro to guide you through the market maze. There are a few great sectors and a lot of awful ones. Uh, the market is not monolithic. 99% of it can be completely ignored. You can earn a 10 times return on the great stocks, get wiped out by the losers. Let a 50 year veteran like me steer you to safe waters. Let me sit next to you and guide your hand on every winning trade. Next. Uh, this is the secret to our success, my Mad Hedge Profit Predictor. Uh, that is our market timing index. And you saw those little blue boxes on the chart. Those are all signals uh, uh, to buy and sell. It's an artificial intelligence-driven algorithm that analyzes 30 different economic, technical, and momentum-driven indicators all day long. Took 1,000 hours of calculations by mathematicians to create this algorithm. Next, why do you need an algorithm? Well, why use a toolbox missing a most important tool? Algorithms have become so dominant in the market, you should never trade without one. It runs real time and optimizes returns with the addition of every new data point far faster than any human can. Imagine a trading strategy that upgrades itself 1,000 times a day. Don't go to a gunfight with a knife. If you are trading out against algos alone, you will lose. Algorithms provide you with a defined systematic trading discipline that will enhance your profits. Next. I'm not the only one using algos. Some 80 to 90% of all current trading is algorithm driven. Uh, and I was walking on the waterfront in Miami a few years ago and I found this super yacht and look what it's called algorithm. Next. Okay, just a second, let me get rid of my messages here. Uh, okay, this is three years of profit predictor performance. You can see we get uh, lots of buy signals, lots of sell signals, enough for several round trips a year. It's like owning a printing press for $100 bills. Next. Uh, this is our trailing one year performance as of last Friday, showing an 86.77% uh, trailing one year return. Next. 
Uh, this is our 12 year track record. Uh, that is 44.91% per year average. Uh, that is 2.23 times the S&P 500. And notice that since the beginning of the year, we have been going straight up uh, on the blue chart while in the orange chart, the S&P 500 has been going straight down. Kind of a good situation to have. You can have this too. Next. Uh, Bill was a struggling tobacco farmer in Virginia who wanted to supplement his fading agricultural income. After making 3.4 million with my trade alerts, he still farms, but now he's growing grapes in California's Napa Valley for the high-end wineries. Next. Uh, Philip was tired of working in the boom and bust of the oil and gas industry in Texas. After following my trade alerts and doubling his money every year for several years, now earns a gener generous living as a full-time trader. Next. Richard made millions religiously following my trade alerts. He now spends his retirement restoring vintage aircraft and flying them over the California coast. Next. Greg turned $100,000 into 2.5 million solely on my trade alerts. He bought a new home in Orange County, California with Tesla solar panels, Tesla power walls, and a Tesla Model 3, and still had enough money to send three kids to college. Next. So what do we do about all this? Well, stocks buy the next big capitulation sell-off, even if it's five or 10% lower. Bonds sell any and all rallies, commodities buy dips, uh, energy stand aside, the play is over here and the risk is insane. Currency stand aside, the dollar could similarly be peaking out here. Precious metals buy dips, Bitcoin buy dips on the 56% sell off. Next. You're not up 86.77% in the past 12 months as I was, you're reading the wrong newsletter or following the wrong trade mentoring service. Next. Uh, you get that kind of performance, you get to do things that other people don't get to do, like ride the owner's suite on the Queen Mary across the Atlantic. Next. Uh, once there, you get to ride the Orient Express from England to Venice, Italy. Uh, warning, uh, every dinner is black tie, so be sure to bring two tuxes. Next. Once in Venice, you get the island hop in your own personal helicopter. Next. So here's the very long view. Here's where the big money will be made. The 2000s and the 2010s were the hard decades for making money. The 2020s and the 2030s will be the easy ones as a global trading uh, demographic brings on a new golden age. Uh, 85 million millennials become the next big spenders over the next 15 years, while 80 million baby boomers a drag on the economy fade from the scene. This will create an economic boom that lasts another decade that started in 2021. Next. So uh, we've seen this happen before. Are you ready for a replay? From 1982 to 2000, the Dow was up 20 times in 18 years. That was the last time we had a demographic tailwind like we're having right now. And if you think I've been smoking California's biggest export, think again, next. Uh, if the Dow average uh, has the same kind of performance that we saw in the 80s of 20 times from the 2009 bottom in 18 years, that takes us to 120,000 by 2027. Uh, and if you think I'm crazy, think again, next. We're already half, more than halfway there. We're already at the 34, 35,000 level with a target for, uh, of 124,000. So that means we only have one more triple left to hit the 120,000 target. That'll be easy to do by 2027, but only if you're in the market owning the right stocks. Next. Uh, on top of that, it's different this time. Tech, uh, we now have a tech turbocharger. Technology is hyper accelerating on all fronts simultaneously and the pandemic greatly sped up the rate of change. The development of functional quantum computers means that computational ability 
is about to increase a trillion fold at no cost. The world's major computational challenges will shortly be solved, such as weather forecasting and cancer cures. All major human diseases will be cured in the next 10 years. Live another decade and you'll have a shot at living to 150. Needless to say, barbell stocks dominate in this scenario will account for the bulk of stock market gains in our lifetimes. The 90s had cheaper computers, cheap operating and software, and a new internet. The 2020s will have 10 times this number of technology drivers. Next. So who will show you how to play the next 85,000 Dow points? Sit with me, John Thomas, the mad hedge fund trader and my global trading dispatch. Discover how you can tap into the top performing trade mentoring service in the industry, up 86.7% in a year. Follow my research and market beating trade alerts and you will rake the profits in. Next. So let a Marine Corps combat pilot steer you to big profits. We trade global equities, bonds, foreign exchange, energy, commodities, precious metals, real estate, and Bitcoin. Next. This is a typical trading history for one month. Uh, 10 out of 11 trade alerts were profitable. We stop out of our losers very quickly because uh, we know 95% of the time the next trade will be a winner. Next. It's just a matter of time before barbell stocks break out to new all-time highs. Watch this space melt up going into the end of 2022. Get ready to start reeling in those whoppers with Global Trading Dispatch as your guide. Next. Uh, here's how our uh, service works. Our algorithm predicted an upside breakout in Tesla in 2020. We sent out a buy signal. Next. This is what it looks like. Uh, it says buy Tesla at 202 or best, opening trade, uh, and to get a $10,000 exposure, you needed to buy 49 shares. Next. Uh, what did Tesla do? It went up 63% in 20 days. Next. So we sent out a trade alert. It said take profits, sell Tesla at 349 or best. And on this trade, we made $7,203 on a $10,000 dollar investment in little more than a month. Next. Did we give up on Tesla after that? No, we kept buying every dip because our research shows that it's eventually going to $10,000 a share. People who followed these trade alerts made a fortune. Tesla was up 339% in six months. Next. So here's some of the 10 baggers we've raked in since 2020. Next. We got Zoom video uh, up 10 times for our next our initial recommendation. Next. We got LAM research up 10.6 times. Next. We got NVIDIA up 16 times. Next. Uh, we got Square up 25 times from our initial 2017 recommendation. Next. We got Moderna up 40 times, which we bought before the pandemic hit. Next. And finally, the big daddy of them all, Tesla, up 400 times for our initial $3.30 recommendation, split adjusted. Next. With the Mad Hedge Global Trading Dispatch, you get instant trade alerts sent out at market sweet spots, about 200 a year, and all the reasons to execute them. Live bi weekly strategy webinars with an interactive QA, special reports on urgent investment topics, invitations to strategy luncheons around the world, more educational videos and webinars than you consume in a lifetime, and access to a 14 year database. Next. This is the one stop shop. It's for individuals who want to understand what is happening in their retirement funds. It's for people who want to learn how to trade for a living full time, get the financial education of a lifetime. Uh, it's for smaller institutions and financial advisors who can't afford in-house research and development. Uh, get in while the melt up uh, before the next melt up begins. Uh, next. This is what you get. You get global trading dispatch, uh, my daily market comments. Next. 
Uh, you get Mad Hedge Hot Tips, the five most important things happening in the market today. You get this every day. Next. Uh, this is what I'm not going to charge you for my service, not going to charge you $100,000. And that's what I charge my big hedge fund clients, and they're happy to pay because I make them millions of dollars. Next. And I'm not going to charge $10,000. That's what I charge my concierge clients. And they're happy to pay because, uh, uh, and they get my personal cell phone number. Next. And I'm not going to charge you $3,000. That's the full price of what I'm offering you on my website. Next. Not for you. Creating this product costs me millions of dollars. And with the best customer service in the industry, running it costs me millions more. Next. Six months for just $997. That's a 66% discount to the website price. Only through this webinar today. Next. I can only take 25 new subscribers at a time, so it's first come, first serve. I can't wait to make you a top drawer trader. Just click on the chat box on the right. Uh, that is a hyperlink that will take you to the dedicated sales page for today's webinar only. Next. And Kate, go ahead and put the link to the sales page on the chat box on top of everything else that you're doing right now. Uh, oops. So how, how are we going to do this? You still there? Oh, okay. Okay. So Kate's going to post it at the end. So go ahead and do that now. It's all set. I posted it. Kate, I've already done it. Okay, have you got it up there? Okay. And uh, if you can see the link to the chat box, go ahead and type yes, and then buy our service. Let me see if we get any yes uh coming to oh yeah okay the link is up uh the link is up uh all right so um okay any uh kate can you see the chat box why don't you shoot me some questions because i got a couple more minutes and i'll check uh, our store and see which of these orders uh, great presentation. Thank you very much, Jim. And Doug has just posted the link again. Any other questions? Because it is linked, uh, uh, the question is, why has silver done so poorly in the last month? And the answer, it's tied to gold. It's treated as a precious metal. Uh, and while Bitcoin was going to new all time highs, uh, both gold and silver were doing awful. Uh, that ended in November when Bitcoin peaked. And if you notice then all the hot money has been pouring uh, uh, out of Bitcoin into both gold and silver and silver's had a pretty decent move since then. Uh, here's a question. Um, uh, what do you think of plat platinum and palladium here? Answer, um, I would be buying those on dips given the exit uh, of Russia as a major supplier on both of those metals. Uh, okay, next. Um, okay, uh, let's see if any more question. Do your, does your service cover... Um, only options or uh, does it also cover equities? Uh, every trade alert we send out covers stocks, bonds, um, uh, ETFs. Uh, it gives you three choices for every trade alert. That way you can tailor it to your own specific experience level and uh, risk uh, tolerance. Uh, Victor is asking a question here. What do you think about Europe at these levels? I think Europe is a much higher risk play 
than the United States right now. That's why I said the U.S. will come back fastest and the most. Uh, the United States does not have a Russian army sitting on its border in a mood to invade neighbors. Okay, let me check my store and see um, how we're doing on orders. And the answer is we're doing very well. Uh, let's take a look. We have uh, Bill from Salt Lake City, Utah just signed up. Uh, thank you very much. Um, promise to work hard for your money and it's the best investment decision you ever made. We have Mary from Tampa, Florida. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. And uh, we've had Joseph from New York City just come in. Uh, let's see. Say that again. Okay, we'll get to them in, in one minute to be exact. Uh, okay, again, click on the link on the chat box on the right uh to take advantage of today's offer uh, we have jim from chicago illinois just came in thank you jim uh and uh if you subscribe to our service now uh we will give you an instant trade alert that can be executed this second because the market is open we will also send you a copy uh kate move forward a couple of slides so we can get to the the uh, offer pages. Yeah, you get a copy of my book, Stocks to Buy for the Coming Roaring Twenties. Uh, and uh, next, uh, okay, next again, uh, next again, uh, and there's the link. Um, and uh, can you back up a slide? Not that one, not that one. No. Back, back up again, because we have a slide of the trade alert that I'm sending out. There you go. Can you guess this trade alert? You have to go through a thousand charts to find one this good. Let me do the heavy lifting for you. Uh, just click on the link on the chat box on the right. That'll take you to our dedicated sales page. Uh, okay, I can see we're gonna hit our 25 limitation pretty soon. So if you're kind of sitting on the fence, hemming and hawing, um, uh, you better move in and take advantage of this one time only offer. Just got an order from Adam in McCordsville, Indiana. Thank you very much, Adam. And the uh, trade alert should be in your inbox right now, as well as a link to download the book, Stocks to Buy for the Coming Roy 20s. Actually, we've got a lot more orders here. Okay, we're almost at the 25 limit. Um, we have Val from San Mateo, California, just across the bay. We have, um, okay, oh, actually we've got a lot of these here. Get the name up. We have John from Napierville, Illinois. And we have, uh, all right, 